Honorable Gerville Jinky Luistro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Attorney Camora, the yes, questions are directed to you. Before I proceed to the questions, I just want to have a clarification first about the confidential fund that were given to the OVP. Am I correct? We have 125 million for the last quarter of 2022. The same was utilized from December 20 to 31 of 2022. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And on the succeeding year, that is 2023, the OVP was allocated also a total confidential fund equivalent to 500 million. Do you confirm? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And out of the 500 million attorney, how much was utilized and how much was unutilized? Uh, Mr. Chair, for 2023, they, they utilized um, for the first three quarters, which is 125 times three. And uh, the, for the fourth quarter, they did not uh, cash advance the amount. So my naiwan pong 125 million. In other words, for clarification of the committee, I wish to state for the record that when we speak of confidential fund of the office of the vice president, we're talking about 125 million spent from December 20 to 31 of 2022. Another 125 million spent on the first quarter of 2023. Another 125 million spent on the second quarter of 2023 and another 125 million spent on the third quarter of 2023. This is a total, if I'm, I am correct, Attorney Camora, 500 million. Do you confirm? Um, that is correct, Madam. Thank uh, you. I wish to go back to my question during the last hearing, Attorney. I ask you, paano po ba natin distinguish ang confidential fund from regular fund. This time, I want a more comprehensive answer, and please try to laymanize it, because I want this to be understood by the Filipino people. As a matter of fact, I am raising this question so the Filipino people will understand ano po ang pagkakaiba ng confidential fund from regular fund. Let us uh, discuss first about the purpose. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, ang purpose po ng um, confidential and intelligence funds are for confidential and or intelligence activities. Um, while yung sa regular funds po, it is for the attainment of programs, activities, and projects other than confidential fund and or intelligence activities. Ito po yung regular na perang ginagamit ng mga government agencies. And if you will agree with me, attorney, if I would say that when we speak of confidential fund, it has something to do with the national security, peace and order surveillance activities. Am I correct? Uh, that is correct po, Madam Chair. And when we speak of regular funds, any other funds except something which has to do about security, peace, and order? Yes, po, Ms. Mad Mr. Chair. Thank you. Now let's go to the procurement. Ano po ang pagkakaiba ng confidential fund from regular fund in terms of procurement? Uh, Mr. Chair, in terms of procurement, uh, the regular uh, funds must follow the laws on procurement, which is now the RA, RA 9184, as amended po. As to confidential and intelligence funds, uh, to avoid compromising the confidential um, matters, it usually does not undergo uh, procurement. And do you agree that we have this joint circular which regulate the utilization of confidential fund? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Can you is, share with us what is that joint circular? It is the joint circular 
issued by the Commission on Audit, the Department of Budget and Management, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, the Governance Commission for GOCCs, and the Department of National Defense. Kanina, Attorney, you mentioned about Republic Act Number 9184. This is the procurement law as uh, amended, tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. And you would agree with me if I would say, under the procurement law, before you proceed to procurement, there has to be a posting. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be an invitation to bid. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be a pre-qualifying process for the bidders. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be a bidding. Yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be a post-qualifying. Yes, Mr. Chair. And all of this will happen before we issue the notice to proceed. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And if Chair. I may add, we also require the parties to execute a contract. Am I correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And all these formalities are not present when we speak about confidential fund, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. That is for the reason that we wish to protect concerns, matters concerning national security, peace and order, and surveillance. Yes. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Now we proceed to number three, about liquidation. Ano pong pagkakaiba ng confidential fund from regular fund? Um, liquidation for confidential intelligence funds is provided under the joint uh, circular 2015-01. Uh, for regular funds, it is um, COA circular number 97-002. Can we laymanize it, Attorney Camora? Kapag po ba tayo'y magliliquidate ng confidential fund, Anong dokumento ang nire-require natin from the agency? Um, the requirements are, are all uh, indicated po sa, na-mention po kanina, 4.8 of the joint circular. In substance, would you agree with me that what we are requiring, if uh, it is a confidential fund, one is financial plan, is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Two is the accomplishment report, is that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And three is the certification of the head of the agency. Uh, is that yes, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Whereas when we speak about the liquidation of regular fund, what requirements do we ask from the agency? Um, these are all under 97-002. Uh, I understand. If I would say that under the regular fund, you are requiring the MOA or the contract, am I correct? I understand that there is a long list of documents, but I'm trying to emphasize only the substantial documents which should not be absent in the compliance of liquidation requirements. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be a MOA or a contract if it is a regular fund. Second, there has to be a receipt. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. There has to be an invoice. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. May I request the Secretary to please flash the first slide? This slide summarizes the distinction between confidential fund and regular fund. In confidential fund, we have the joint circular 01, which regulates the same. For regular fund, we have the procurement law, otherwise known as RA 9184 as amended. As to purpose, confidential fund is for the purpose of peace and order and surveillance activities to promote national interest. Regular fund are other purposes other than those mentioned in the confidential fund. For procurement, there has to be posting and bidding requirements which are not necessary for confidential fund. And for liquidation, in confidential fund, it is enough that there is a financial plan, an accomplishment report, and a certification of the head of agency. Whereas in regular fund, there has to be a receipt, an invoice, a copy of the MOA, a copy of the contract. Do you agree, attorney? 
uh, as to yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. I will cite some illustration for the better understanding of the Filipino people. I will be using confidential fund. Ang bibilhin ko supplies of materials and equipments. Kailangan ko po bang mag-post at mag-bid? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Kailangan po ba na ang maging supplier nito is the lowest bidder? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. No. But if I will be using a regular fund, I will be purchasing supplies of materials and equipment. Of course, I need to go through the process of posting and bidding, and then I need to choose the lowest bidder. Tama po ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And then, attorney, I will be renting a safe house for surveillance activities. So this is a confidential fund. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kailangan ko po bang mag-posting mag at mag-bidding? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. No. Diretso na sa rental ng safe house for surveillance, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Do I still have to evaluate, invite, to be able to choose the lowest cost of rental for the surveillance? Uh, no need, Mr. Chair. No need, because this is a confidential fund. I will be buying a car for surveillance activities. Kailangan ko po bang mag-posting and bidding? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Do I Although, need to choose the lowest bidder? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. But if I will be using a regular fund, I need to go through the process of posting, bidding, and come up with the lowest bidder. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. If I will be procuring an equipment for surveillance activities, kailangan po ba ang posting at bidding? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. No? Do I need to choose the lowest bidder? No, Mr. Chair. But if I will be utilizing a regular fund, these requirements are all necessary. Tama po ba? Tama po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Now we proceed to confidential fund. I remember during the last hearing, tinanong po ito ni Honorable Marcoleta. He was saying that the other agencies and even the other LGUs have confidential fund as well. Tama po, attorney? Uh, tama po, Mr. You remember Chair. that? Yes, Mr. He Chair. made a manifestation that uh, even the other agencies of the government and the LGUs have confidential fund. And I wish to share the second slide to our committee. That is the basis of the confidential fund of the LGU. And tantamount to saying that it is true that even the LGUs have confidential fund. This is uh, DILG Memorandum Circular 2022-118 and the JMC 2015-01. Tama po ba ito, Attorney Camora? Uh, tama po, Madam, Mr. Chair. And you will agree with me also that under Section 16 of the Local Government Code, kasama po sa mandate ng LGU, is to promote and maintain peace and order. Um, I think the lawyers will agree. The lawyers from the DILG. I understand you're from COA. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So let me share this information that under Section 16 of the Local Government Code, bahagi po ng mandate ng LGUs, Local Government Unit is to promote and maintain peace and order. And this justifies kung bakit mayroong confidential fund ang mga LGUs. Tama po ba, attorney? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Now let's go to the mandate of the OVP. Kasama po ba sa mandato ng OVP ang promotion ng peace and order? Conduct of surveillance activity and national security. Uh, may I ask po yung OVP team, mas knowledgeable po sila sa mandates. OVP team, please. You are from COA also. Yes, Mr. Chair. But may I allow you are... to speak na po? May I allow to speak na po? Go ahead. Can yes. you please enlighten us? What office are you representing? Why Attorney Camora refer you as the OVP team? Because I understand you're also from COA. 
I'm the audit team leader of the Office of the Vice Presidents for the audit of the regular funds. Audit team leader of the OVP with respect to regular funds. But I'm talking about confidential funds. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Do you think you are in the proper position to answer this question? This but is about question, confidential funds. But the question is all about the mandate of the OVP. All right. What is the mandate of the OVP? Um, based on the notes to a financial statement of the R, annual audit report, the OVP, as the second highest office in the land committed to the service of the nation, OVP performs executive, ceremonial, and advocacy functions collaborating with stakeholders and organizations in both public and private sectors to develop and promote programs that uplift the lives of the Filipino people. That's does, the mandate of the does it in any way? Does it in any way mention about the peace and order, surveillance activity, and national security? Uh, based on what I've said, The Paul, question is answerable only by yes or no. No, Paul. It does not? Yes. Mother. So you confirm that matters concerning peace and order, national security and surveillance is not part of the mandate of the OVP. Do you confirm that? Mr. Chair, yes, but based on the mandate provided. Yes. And why do you think the OVP was given confidential fund, considering that it is not part of the mandate to promote peace and order. I think I'm not the uh, right person to answer the question because uh, I think uh, it may cause to, to the Department of Budget and Management because the, they are the one do, who uh, provided the, the confidential fund in 2022. I understand. But let me state for the record that nowhere in the law, not even in the Constitution, provide that the OVP has the mandate of promoting and maintaining peace and order, conducting surveillance activity, and even matters concerning national security. That is for the record, Mr. Chair. Now, talking about confidential fund, may we please flash the third slide. Kanina po, pinag-usapan natin that under Section 16 of the Local Government Code, ang mandato ng LGU is to promote peace and order. And that justifies kung bakit ang mga LGUs ay mayroong confidential fund. Now, I wish to share this slide showing the LGUs which have the huge or the biggest number of confidential fund. This is representing year 2022. The Vow City has 460 million. Cebu City has 7.38 million. The City of Manila has 120 million. Makati City has 240 million. And Quezon City has 75 million. Nakakapagtaka lang po kung bakit nalampasan pa ng Davao ang City of Manila ang Makati, ang Quezon City. For Makati, the vow almost doubled the confidential fund. For City of Manila, it almost tripled the confidential fund. Ang Cebu City po was way left behind because it is only 7.38. So I just want to state for the record the huge disparity of the confidential fund of the VAW City as compared with the other LGUs. We have on the screen Cebu City, 7.38, City of Manila, 120 million, Makati City, 240 million, Quezon City, 75 million, while the VAW it skyrocketed to 460 million. May we request the Secretariat to please flash the fourth slide. This is the history of confidential fund of the Vow City. 2016, it is 144 million. 2017, it is 294. 
2018, it's 420. 2019, it is 460. 2019 up to 2022, it is 460 million. I just wish to state for the record, Mr. Chair, that while we acknowledge that the LGU is entitled to confidential fund because under Section 16 of the Local Government Code, bahagi po ng mandato nila is the promotion of peace and order. I just wish to state for the record that during this time, 2018 to 2022, the mayor of the Bau City, I believe, is no less than the vice president. And I wish to state for the record as well that the confidential fund that we're discussing about the OVP last quarter of 2022 and the first three quarters of 2023, the one in disposal is no less than our vice president as well. I wish to express my I wish to lament that it seems to us that the confidential fund is being used comfortably. We have to emphasize that it's, it is addressing a very important reason, and that is the promotion of peace and order, con conduct of surveillance activities, including matters concerning national security. And if this is the case, Mr. Chair, I believe that the COA has to be very strict concerning the very loose, the very light, and the very few requirements which are being imposed in procurement and even liquidation of confidential funds. What I wish to point out, Mr. Chair, Maluwag tayo sa confidential fund because we give value to matters concerning peace and order and national security. However, Mr. Chair, I observed na ito pong kaluagan na ito ay nagiging dahilan kung bakit ang COA ngayon are issuing the notice of this allowance and even this Congress is prompted to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation. I wish to manifest my observation that the irregularities which have been observed in the utilization of confidential fund in the office of the vice president should be checked as well with respect to the utilization of confidential fund of the Vow City during those times that the mayor is no less than our vice president. I submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we will now proceed to the to our next topic. The